Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Joe Ellis. I'm an Olympus educator and wedding and portrait photographer from Dallas, Texas. And today I want to talk about printing with your Olympus camera, specifically printing holiday cards and some tips and tricks I have for that. And just talk a little bit about the technical side of printing with your Olympus camera. Let's get into it. Okay, so before I get into today's topic, I wanna to talk about one correction I have from yesterday's video about shooting portraits where you, the photographer, are in the frame. Uh, most of the video is great, there's just one small error, and it has to do with the focus clutch mechanism in Olympus Pro lenses. When you pull the focus clutch back on Olympus Pro lens, it will actually change the focus of the camera to wherever it is marked on the um, lens's focus ring. So for example, if you uh, are using autofocus and you focus at something that's five feet away and you pull the focus clutch back and it's focused at infinity on the focus clutch, it'll actually move the focus of the camera. And if you were a long time viewer of this uh, channel, you know that I'm not a huge fan of the focus clutch because uh, more often than not, I find I'm accidentally tripping it. So in all of my Olympus cameras, I have turned it off, which is why it didn't dawn on me that this was a problem. But uh, to solve it, just go ahead and um, put the camera into manual focus via the super control panel if you want to use my method, or you could simply use manual focus clutch and then just focus on your person in manual focus, um, either using the magnify tool or whatever, if you want to avoid there being a shift in focus when you go from uh, the autofocus to the manual focus with the clutch mechanism. So just know that, um, use the super control panel to move to manual focus if you want to use my method, or if you're going to use the focus clutch, just know that as soon as you pull the clutch back, it's going to move to wherever the focus point is marked on the focus ring. Okay, let's get back into today's topic. I want to talk about two sort of difficult things to understand about printing pictures that a lot of people get tripped up on as they get into this um, you know, field, which you know, printing is a, <laughs> an ocean of information. And I'm gonna make a few generalizations today that uh, if you are super technical, uh, these answers would change slightly. But for those of us who do you know, the basics and are looking for an easy way to understand this information, these are good guidelines. So the first thing is that your camera has a certain number of megapixels, which is what's always advertised when you buy it. Um, like for example, the EM10 Mark III is a 16 megapixel camera. And that means that the image is made out of 16 million little squares that we call pixels, of course. And that correlates to a certain resolution. And that resolution is 4,608 pixels across by 3,456 pixels down. And so if we shoot large JPEG or super fine JPEG or raw files, um, those three settings give us all of that information for every single picture. You're gonna get all 16 million pixels. And when you look at that um, objectively and just look at it in Photoshop, it's so many pixels across by so many pixels deep. But when you go to print the image, you have to define one other thing. And that is how many pixels are there going to be in every inch of your print? So, or used to make every inch of your print. So for example, if you wanted to print one of these images at 23 inches on the long side, if you did the division, you would have 200 pixels per inch in your, uh, to be used for your print. And if you, uh, you know, needed, if you wanted to only make a 15 inch across picture, if you wanted the picture to be 15 inches across, then you would have 300 pixels per inch being used to make your print. If you wanna make a five by seven, and you say, okay, so seven times 300 is 2,100, then a five by seven print needs about, if you like 300 pixels per inch, uh, needs 1,500 pixels by 2,100 pixels. And uh, that 300 pixels per inch is kind of the benchmark for a lot of people in terms of getting great photographic quality prints. If you can give the printer 300 pixels per inch, you can be guaranteed of a very good looking print. Uh, and there are, of course, variances to this. Some people like 360 pixels per inch. Some people think that 240 pixels per inch is fine, but it's somewhere in that range. I think 300 is a good number. 
So you can see that um, very easily um, any camera that's being sold today can make beautiful 5x7 or even 8x10 inch prints. So just know that no matter how you define the pixels per inch, you're still using the same 4,608 pixels from the long side of your EM10 Mark III to make that same picture. Now, you can go in or your printer can go in and can make a print larger than you um, have natively. And that's called interpolating. And so Photoshop can do it or your printer can do it. It can go in and say, I want you to make this image size bigger than it was natively. So I could say, okay, the picture is currently 4,000 pixels across. I'm gonna go in and tell Photoshop to make the picture 6,000 pixels across. And it will very intelligently go through and upsize the photograph, trying to retain all the details, as much detail as possible, giving you a larger file size for printing purposes. I personally think that using your lab as a partner and having them do it yields the best possible results. So if you're going to make a really large print for your home, have your lab handle that process for you. Um, and I'll go over my favorite lab here in just a minute. The second piece of information um, that I find that a lot of people get tripped up on is they start looking at how many megabytes is my image and then thinking to themselves that the higher the megabytes, the bigger the picture that they have. If you save the same picture in TIFF format and in JPEG format out of Photoshop, the TIFF is gonna be much larger than the JPEG. But the main reason for that is that a TIFF file is not compressed. There's no intelligent squeezing of the information to make the file size smaller. And that's the main difference for most people. Yes, TIFF files have the ability to have a greater bit depth and yada, yada, yada. But if you just look at them side by side in Photoshop, um, after you've uh, run them through, let's say, Lightroom, you're not gonna see visually any difference in the two pictures. But when you save them, the TIFF file is gonna be much larger than the JPEG. JPEGs and their compression was created so that it would be easier for us to send and move and upload image files. And so even like in your iPhone, which is saving in an even another, more comp like better compression format, which is H-E-I-F, that is the same principle. It's just giving you close to or, or, um, or the same image quality as larger file sizes, but giving you to you in a, in a smaller um, package so that it's easier for you to move them around. So just know that um, no matter what file type you save or what your megabytes are, that's not directly correlated to the image size that you have for printing purposes. Okay, let's get back to the topic. So uh, shooting for a Christmas card. Uh, I'm gonna give a couple of really easy pieces of advice. Number one is uh, shoot with intent. You need to try and give yourself enough variety that you um, have options when you're going to design the card or picking a template. And um, you need to make sure uh, that you leave room for a headline. I don't always uh, do this because sometimes I pick my favorite picture uh, from the shoot and then I don't have a great piece of blank sky or a sidewalk or something to put the headline onto. But if you can do that, it will make life that much easier for you. So shoot with intent. Shoot as many of your compositions as possible in both horizontal and vertical formats. Because when you go to look at card templates, you're going to get uh, kind of shoehorned into one or the other, and it's good to have both orientations. And like I said, leave a nice piece of your image, shoot loose enough that you're going to be able to put a headline wherever you uh, would like it. Um, you know, pick a press printed card. And uh, what I mean by that is that uh, a lot of the printers these days will allow you to do your printing on cardstock instead of on photographic paper. And this makes a huge difference to the look and feel of your Christmas card. So if you've been going out and using photographic paper, that tends to be kind of flimsy and it isn't double-sided and it just doesn't make for as um, polished of a Christmas card as a piece of cardstock does. So while this is the same, you know, photograph and the same card in essence, um, the uh, cardstock is much thicker. It has a little bit lower resolution. I don't think that matters for a Christmas card, um, but it does make for easy mailing and for um, a much more polished look. So look for a press printed option when you go to make a Christmas card. And there are lots of online services for that, um, but my favorite is MPix. 
and Empix is the sister lab to the pro lab that I use for my business and offers a lot of the same benefits. So if you were looking for a really great lab and I have no affiliation with them, I just love them, um, then this would be a great place to start. And they uh, offer fast shipping and beautiful products. So what I've done on the computer here is that I have logged into an Empix account and I've gone to their Christmas cards. So if I go back a couple of times here and you look at their Christmas card section, uh, probably the easiest way to tackle this project is to just use one of their templates. So you can scroll down through here through dozens and dozens of these. And then if you have given yourself enough variety in terms of uh, what you've shot, you should be able to very easily pick a template where your photographs work with the spaces that you have. Um, if that's not the case, um, then you can use a blank template. And so this is what I do most of the time. And if you have a little bit of Photoshop skill, it's pretty easy to add a text layer onto your photograph and then you can move and shape and do things with it that you can't do, you know, choosing a template. So in this case here, I could just uh, do a design your own. And the other really big benefit of doing press printed cards is that they can be double sided. So I really like to add information on both sides of the cards. And then my other hot tip for you guys here, if you haven't thought of it, is that I really think it's great to add the date to your Christmas card and also the names and ages of your kids. That way, when you're going back through your archive of Christmas cards, you know what year it was taken, how old they were, and it's a really great way to kind of create an archive of, of memories in terms of how people were looking each year of their lives. So um, that is um, sort of my topic for today, um, you know, and I think that if you are designing a Christmas card, uh, Mpix is a beautiful place to go. Um, like I said, you just pick five by sevens and then you can pick your paper type and your envelope type and really create a very custom product, a very professional polished product. So I, you know, I just really wanna talk about this today and I really wanna encourage everyone to do this, especially if you have um, you know, kids that are growing fast at young ages, this is a beautiful thing to do. I think sharing Christmas cards is one of my favorite holiday traditions. I hope it's one for you guys too. And if you have struggled with this or, or getting them out the door, uh, find a great partner lab who can do a press printed card from you. Pick one of their beautiful templates or design something yourself. That's what I have today, guys. Tomorrow I wanna to talk about uh, doing actual gift prints. We'll talk a little bit about um, getting prints uh, done that will be used for framing that you can give away as gifts. Uh, just trying to cover some topics that are uh, ways that we can actually use the photo photography that we create throughout the year rather than just talking about the techie stuff that we like to receive as gifts ourselves. Maybe we'll get into that too at some point. But thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you all in the next one. <music>